The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good, Lewis. We're having a lot of fun in River City today. Uh, big moves, of course, are caused by Amazon. I posted the NASDAQ, or the DAX. Let's get this up here first. I hope you got it. Uh, evidently, you didn't. There's the German DAX. And then the next one we want to take a look at, which very, looks very similar, which is the FTSE. Get that up here. You'll notice that these charts have lovely A, B, C, D patterns in them. So sort of, you know, pay attention to that. And then what we're going to do right now is we're going to see what happened to the E-mini S&P last night. We'll get this up here so you can take a look at it. And you'll be able to see what happened was that it is... Uh, made a exact 61% retracement last night. You'll notice that big run at late in the day was caused by the Amazon. We went stayed there for about an hour last night till about midnight, and then it, it started to roll over. We came down to the 61% retracement, and that's where we're sitting uh, pretty much right now. So we'll see what's happening. Um, there's a lot of rumor, folks, about what the heck's going on in the world in China. We hear stories about biological warfare and all the other stuff, and I don't know actually what to believe. I saw a video yesterday that was a per an area of a park right next to the Boon in Shanghai, the second largest city in China, and there was nobody in the park. Folks, that would be like nobody being in Times Square or nobody being in, on, on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills or nobody being at the Miracle Mile in Chicago or Peachtree Street in Atlanta. There was nobody there other than the guy that was dictating the little uh, video that you have. I don't know how it could have been false because the buildings and the trees, everything were 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 there. But my goodness, that that was a little bit a little bit scary. It has to be pretty. Uh, significant, I think, because you're seeing, you know, reports of what China is doing to prevent, you know, the spread of it by keeping people from going and coming and all that kind of stuff. But frankly, uh, that's why I'm a technician, folks. I tell you, I, I look at these things and I say, okay, how could it go to A, B, C, D with all that stuff going on? I don't know. And the NASDAQ, if you want to defy human nature and do the work yourself, take a 15-minute chart, a 30-minute chart over the last three days, and you notice the high we made last night at 92, ooh, 35 or 92, 92.50 was a perfect A, B, C, D to the exact tick, much like we had when we reached uh, 33. 35 in the S&P uh, a week or so ago. No matter what, we're going to see increased volatility. Now, keep a very close eye on the crude oil complex today, folks, because we are down near a major ABCD pattern in the crude oil that we've talked about uh, quite a bit down to that 91 and change. We got down, uh, uh, had a dollar rally last night that stopped exactly at the 61% retracement of the previous day's high. And then, of course, it's come down and testing that bottom again. But it's a very, very important bottom. I'll post it up in here. This is the one from Sunday where we were saying to look for the support here. You know, once we went through that 786, uh, we were heading down, and we got down to 91.52 or uh, 91.62. The ABC on that pattern measures to 91.32. So we're still a dollar away. And, of course, with the weekend coming, who knows uh, what's going to happen. You're right, David. Armageddon has once again been postponed. Folks, I... You know, I'm really skeptical about what I see in the news anymore. And you know, I, that's why I respect Shanghai. If you do, if you do fake news in Shanghai, you get ten, you get ten free years in the big house. If they catch you reporting stuff that's false and you knew about it, you're in big trouble. And the other thing is, if you've ever been to China, the first thing you see, instead of, you know, when you come into the United States, it says, welcome to the United States of America. <laughs> the big sign in China says, you sell drugs, you die. It's a death penalty. That cuts back on the death, you know, the, the selling of drugs quite a bit, I would think. At least the profit factor might still there, but the fear factor would be uh, a great deal later. Okay, now, there, because of what's going on in, in 
one particular commodity that we're watching. It's a group of commodities, and we've been speaking about it for quite some time, and that is this uh, U.S. dollar index and the euro. If you remember that euro at that 110 level, we got down as low as 109.95. And now we're trading at 110.50. There's your ABCD structure that you can see here. It's a 135 pattern, folks. If you see A over there, that's one. You see C, that's three. And if you see the high that we made here at 98.10, that was a five. Not only that, but it was an ABCD pattern. Absolutely perfectly symmetrical in time and price. Measure the low to the high of the AB leg, and you'll see that it was uh, eight days. And if you look at the uh, high in the CD leg, it was it was nine days and came in exactly at the 78 percent level. So that's why it's pretty good. And we got a caller in from Permis. I think it's New Jersey. Victor, are you there? Yeah, how you doing? Uh, we got this WWE. It's set to open at 46. If you check the chart, there's a gap at 43.25. OK, it's going after that. Is it uh, is that the Worldwide uh, Federation of Wrestling or something like that? Yeah, the two financial guys are leaving, and they're you know they're going to have very poor earnings. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't like gaps like that. You know, I, I, they're a little scary. The way you trade them though is if you if you, the gap comes in and they immediately get away from the gap, that tells you that it's going to go in that direction. What I mean, Victor, is if it gaps down and then continues to go down. No, it is. Yeah, well, then that's what's going to happen. I wouldn't touch that stock so, except from the short side. So even, yeah, for a few more days? Yeah, a few more days. I would say we got the weekend. You certainly don't want to hold anything over the weekend, given all the conditions that nah. we've got going now. So I would so, wait till so, Monday. Well, their earnings come out Wednesday, so I don't even touch it then. Yeah, well, there you go. Call, call in on Wednesday, and we'll see where it is. That might give you a better shot. All right, thank you. All right, hey, thanks day. for calling in. We appreciate it. Have a wonderful year, too. All righty, we'll move on here and continue talking about this U.S. dollar, folks. This is very, very important, and the reason is is we're having a, a little bit of a pullback here now. If this is really going to be bullish, it's not going to get any lower than around 97.10. So we could get a three- or four-day down move, and then the market could go back up again. That would be the exact opposite of what we're looking at in the euro. Because you remember when we were talking about the euro, I repeat this because— it's, you know, th these are things that everybody's using all the time. And you'll notice that this is this 110 level. It went down to that level. Hold on one second. Get this up here to, so we can see it a little better. Here is the, uh, you see where five came in. It came in. You notice that we were looking for it to come in around the, uh, the 27th to, or 28th to the 29th of um uh, January, just based on that uh, 80, 44, and 82-day cycle that came in right there at the, uh, just a tad below the 110 level, 109.90. Now we're back to where it is right now. It's trading at 110.57 right now as we speak. So it's rallied about uh, 60 pips, which is only $600. But, you know, when you're risking that trade, you're only risking about $300. So if you did it, you've got twice your risk. So you put to take off half and put the other and keep your stop at break even is what I would do if I was going to uh, if I was going to do something like that. I, I certainly hope that helps. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's move on here and get to pay a few bills and we'll be right back. Tom Hugard is our guest in 15 minutes. You don't want to miss it. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I wanted to cover one other thing that uh, we covered in the webinar the other day that's kind of interesting. Uh, we did a lot of mathematics behind this, and this is basically the uh, ABCD pattern. Uh, yes, the uh, Ruby's saying about the platinum pull back to near target area uh, to buy it again. Actually, I, I, I would not do anything, uh, Ruby, until Monday. And the reason why is anything could happen, and it usually does, of course. So uh, mainly, uh, Sarah, oh dear. Boys and girls, hang on here just a minute. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> hey, Chief. Oh. Sorry, folks. Those of you that know me pretty well have been here. That's Carlos. He's been taking care of our cars for our car. We don't have multiple cars. He comes every uh, every Friday morning to uh, wash our car. And uh, son of a gun, if Sarah is not over at uh, the Safeway, she was able to get masks, surgical masks, because there are none available here in Tucson. We went everywhere, but fortunately, they have a shipment coming in at 7 o'clock, and so she's over there waiting for it. And we're shipping those on to Hong Kong because they can't get them uh, anywhere. So that's what's going on. So sorry for the interruption, folks. No cigarettes. Oh my gosh, I've never had a cigarette in my life, and neither has uh, neither has Sarah. My parents were big smokers, but I certainly wasn't. All right, let's move. Any any questions, folks? Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Al said the lines are jammed right now, but he's assuming they will be lightening up in just a little bit, and we'll take a look at it. I posted this chart here of uh, the ABCD pattern, and what we've done is some mathematics behind it. We know that the we've proven math 
mathematically that there's a positive expectation with the ABCD pattern. I'm going to share that in a manual that John Jameson and I are doing. Uh, it's called the Floor Traders Handbook. What we tried to do was, because of all these algorithmic trading and all these multiple screens and all the different, you know, things that you can use and everything, to just boil it down to something really, really simple that you can do with a pencil and a piece of paper and one little laptop. You don't have to have, you know, multiple screens. And believe me, folks, if you can ever come to my office, I have two 60-inch uh, monitors, one on each side of the room there that I used to have. I haven't turned those things on in like two years, and uh, they're beautiful. But the problem is, if you if you stand in front of them, it's like getting being in a um, a sauna or a uh, sunroom. They're just very, very bright, and I don't use them anymore at all. So that's uh, the way it goes. Who knows? I wanted to uh, to to show you when you're looking at that pattern, basically what we've done is we've we've looked at all of these ABCD patterns, and that's all the market is ever doing, ABCD up, ABCD down, or ABCD sideways. And it all depends on that AB leg, because that AB leg, if you take 25% of that AB leg, and use it as your risk, if you're going to point D, that's going to give you a minimum of a three to one or four to one profit objective. The problem is that they don't work all the time. I know that's hard to believe, boys and girls, but they don't. And so what you have to do is you have to be uh, prepared to, uh, you know, stand aside or get out you know, when you're wrong. And that's, uh, you know, really what we're watching here as we look at some of these things here uh, here this morning. So we'll see uh, how these things are going to move here pretty quickly, and then we'll move on. Okay, um, there's, a, there's one other market that uh, uh, the British pound has moved up quite a bit from that 2970 level. We're up uh, almost 200 points from the bottom. Uh, so that's a, another interesting one that we, you know, we've been following. So that means that that U.S. dollar has definitely turned, folks. The problem is, is that it doesn't necessarily going to go uh, too, too far from here. The reason why is that ABCD pattern is done. And here again, if you take the D point and take the top 25% of the CD leg, if it gets below that 25%, that's telling you the market's going to break. And we're not even close to that yet. So all we're seeing now in these rallies here in the euro and also in the uh, the British pound and the uh, the yen and all these others, that means they could stop instantaneously. And with all the news going on, my goodness, I you know I wouldn't I wouldn't even want to hold a position overnight, given the fact of uh, all the news that's out there. Oh my gosh, that's a, a scary as possible scary can be. Let's go over to the futures market a little bit because we're going to have some great buys here pretty soon. Okay, let's take a look here at this wheat that Mr. Z talked to us about here that. Uh, 592 level. We're now trading below 560. We're down to about 555. There again, you notice that we've we've dropped more than 25% off of the CD leg, and that means we're we're most probably heading down to those old highs at 545. If you go back and look at the highs in November when that CD leg started, that's most probably where it's going to end. And if you wanted to do the work. Just measure that from December 9th to the high, and that's going to take you to the old 61% retracement at 545 a bushel. So kind of keep an eye on that. Remember, it's, there's not going to be much exporting stuff from the United States over to the uh, what you call it's going on until we uh, – I'll get the bonds in just a second, uh, uh, Marshall. But uh, that's that, at least that's what I hear from Cy and all the other folks is that's what's really going on. So that's really what we're paying attention to. Let's go to the Treasury bonds. Treasury bonds made a beautiful – and the notes. The notes made – well, we did that before. Let's uh, shut the front door and raise the rent. I think I still got that note chart somewhere, don't I? Uh, maybe not. Nope, I don't know. No, I don't. But uh, the note stopped exactly at the 61% uh, retracement until – let's see what they're doing this morning. I don't even know. Uh, they're back to that uh, – there's a lot of resistance up there at 163.14, folks. So kind of keep a, keep a close eye on that because that would be one that would be uh, a little bit interesting. But uh, remember, if we get these notes above 164 or bonds above 164 – you're going to be looking at something that's going to be um, pretty uh, pretty crazy. So that's uh, the main thing to uh, keep in mind. Folks, when you see these markets jump like we saw with uh, Google and with um, – uh, Tesla, oh my gosh, look at Tesla, boys and girls. You talk about talk about the uh, 
Look at this move here where we are. Look, can you believe we got up to 650 with that huge gap? Now, there, there's a gap that's going to be filled, folks. Go back and look at Tesla for as long as you want to go. We, there's Look at the gap that we got down at 265 back in October. There's a gap there, but this is a breakaway gap. With, and, then, and if it goes below, here's one. If it closed in the lower part of the range around 6, uh, 620 on today, uh, I would short the heck out of that. Or put a, I would buy a put. And the reason why is if it gaps down Monday, you leave a big island reversal though there. And that's a, that's a pretty ominous uh, pattern. But the chance of it closing at 620 today would be uh, rather remote because no one's going to uh, put a position on like that because of that. Who knows? We'll see. Um, you know, that I really don't know what's happened with that. By the way, we got the break coming up, and then we've got Tom coming on, and we need to uh, chat with it. We'll be right back with Tom Hugard, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. With uh, Tom Hugard, Trader Tom. Tom, we've got a couple of questions for you, my friend, from uh, your, our listeners. The first one is, how in the heck are you handling this volatility that we're seeing due to the news? Oh, dear Lord, that is a 
<laughs> That's a great question. I don't think I handle that volatility any better than anyone else does. I think we all like some volatility, but I must admit I like volatility when it's in one direction. And a trading session like uh, we had in Dow Jones yesterday, well, frankly, I I think I gave up halfway through. I uh, I was down some 20 points on the day, and I thought I <laughs> I just couldn't see myself trading it very well. I I prefer trending days, you know, the the opening price principle, and I just felt that it, we weren't really going anywhere. So I decided just to you know call it a day. If, and I guess that's my advice. If you don't if you don't resonate with a market tune, then step away from the screen because otherwise it becomes a rather expensive journey. You know, I saw a great interview with Paul Tudor Jones only uh, yesterday evening because you know I decided just to take a step away from the screens, and it's a rather old interview with him. I must be in the 80s because because it's they're talking about a crash coming, and this was before the 1987 crash, and he was. He was referring to a particular dollar-yen trade, or no, sorry, Deutschmark trade. This is how old it is. This is when we had the Deutschmark and the Lira and, and whatnot. And he's saying after the trade was completed and he hadn't done very well, he said, I wasn't my usual aggressive self. And usually when I'm not aggressive, it probably costs me. And I think that that says so much about the super trader than he is, but it also says a lot about the kind of attitude that we have to come into when we're trading is that we, we truly have to believe in what we're doing. We, we can't go in with half measures. We have to fully commit. I really, I really resonated with when he was talking about that. I thought it was, it was a great piece of, tr of, uh, of advice for traders. Yeah, he's got a lot of great things. Uh, when you can get him in person, he's really something. The second question that we have, Tom, is, uh, dear, uh, the news. How how are, how do you handle the news? Do you listen to it? Do you watch it? Do you see how the market reacts to it? That's the, that's the question. You know, I can't but listen to the news. I I have to be part of it. I. I sometimes stand uh, in front of people if I give a speech about trading and then say, you know, I don't follow the news and I don't listen to the news. But I think it's very difficult to be a trader, especially a trader in the environment that we have now where things happen so quickly and news is digested so instantly to be completely immune to what is going on uh, in the markets and then sort of seek out an explanation to, well, why did the Dow just rally 200 points on the back of a WHO uh, announcement about this? Severity. So, I, I, no, I, I, if there's a non-farm payroll, I make sure that I don't have a position just before the numbers. I'm not overly interested in what the numbers are either. I'm more interested in what the reaction to the numbers are. But if I may mm. just uh, bore your listeners with a really interesting story that has emerged here in Europe, and it's sure it's already on your shores as well. But there, there was this, uh, there was this hypothesis that the coronavirus could have been the offspring of a, a disease inflicted by people who had eaten bats. And there was this rather grotesque uh, video clip of a young lady uh, who was sitting, you know, holding a bat and basically chewing into the bat. It's called bat soup. Um, and for those of us who don't uh, have bat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it, it is a rather um, <laughs> a grotesque image, but nevertheless, it's part of their heritage and culture, so you, you fully respect that. But what, what actually transpired from the, looking at this image was that she was sitting there in a, in a beautiful skirt, and in, be, in the background you can see another lady with bare legs. And as one person then pointed out, it is freezing cold in Wuhan at the moment, so how on earth could this photo have been taken from that? And it then turns out that that actually image was four years old. And it just goes to show that so much of what we are presented for as traders, but also just as human beings, you can't can't always trust it. You re you really have to be rather discerning more than you ever have. This is true, I'll tell you. And it, they do so much with these Photoshop stuff that it's really quite amazing what they what they get away with. Uh, do you have any Do you have any words of wisdom wisdom for us today, Tom? Well, I do actually. Uh, now that now that you asked, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, as, as as listeners may or may know know about me, but I I do like to do my research and I do like to.
do what I call data uh, data handling or data manipulation, uh, where I try to find patterns that, that people may not um, be aware of. We're all aware of a head and shoulder pattern and, and, and Fibonacci ratios, et cetera, but very few people are, if ever, because I have never, ever heard about it until I uncovered this myself. But I did some research on the days of the week, and I noticed a very specific pattern that really sprung up to mind with a 95% success rate over the last five years. And that pattern comes here. If I observe that the Dow Jones index or the S&P 500 index on a Friday is incapable of trading above the highs of the previous day, then there's a 95% chance that Monday will trade below the lows set on the Friday. In other words, if I see today on this trading day that we are incapable of trading above Thursday's high, which I think was pretty much where we closed last night, if we're not able to get up to the highs of yesterday, the odds are overwhelmingly high that we're going to see a very weak Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened last week, and you really you uh, you were heavily short Friday, and you I doubled up right on the close. I I, I was uh, very impressed I, watching you do that. <laughs> yeah. you know, tell tell the folks how hard it is, Tom, when you got a big big profit of what 260 points in the Dow Jones, and then right on the close, you're you're telling everybody I'm doubling my position here instead of taking profits over a a weekend that could have gone either way. Uh, what was your thought process going through at that time? I'm sure you. Remember, when you have, when you've done your statistics, you have to ask yourself, now I've done the statistics, do I believe in it? You know, because there's no point in doing statistics. There's no point in doing all our chart research if we then don't commit and actually believe in the, in the findings that we have uncovered. And I didn't spend three, four, five months of my time researching this pattern if I wasn't going to fully profit from it. So the fact that we hadn't been able to trade above Thursday high meant that over the last 28 occurrences, there was only once where the Dow actually traded higher on a Monday immediately following on a gap up. And I just felt, no, the odds are overwhelmingly in my favor that this market will digest more bad news over the weekend. Otherwise, it would have closed on a high on a Friday, and it didn't. So my thought press was, it, it wasn't particularly complicated. It was a question of, I am prepared to sacrifice the open profits that I have. Of course, there's already, there's always the uncertainty of the gap up on a Sunday night, but I was prepared to play that game. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly worked in your favor. What else would you like to share with us today, Tom? I know you're very busy, but uh, we've got a break coming up. Could you stay with us after the break, maybe, and share a few more tidbits? Sure. Yeah, of Tom, so we've got a second here. What did you learn from your day, you, with the public that you're on TV all the time in the UK at City Index? What, what did you learn during that time, Tom? Well, I learned that journalists are every bit as fickle human beings that, uh, than the rest of us. <laughs> I learned that uh, that the best way to get re-invited back on TV was to talk on sound bites, which means that, you know, short, snappy, controversial statements, they love that. Um, and and I, I, I hate if I'm belittering a profession because I really am not. I understand that journalists may not always have time to, to do research, um, to do thorough research okay. in what it is that people yeah. are saying. But okay, I also okay. learned that actually... It, 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 I, I don't, it, having worked in the industry for 10 years made me skeptical. If you're in the CD it, market it, and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Nick. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Tom Hugard. Tom, you want to continue? Uh, yeah, I think you asked me uh, what did I learn from going on TV a lot when I was an analyst in, in London City uh, about uh, a decade ago, and I, I learned that uh, it, that journalists they will they will they will facilitate they'll ask questions, but you're very you're very very rarely ever questioned on your calls. It is just you come on TV, you think yeah, I'm Dow's going to go up, Dow's going to go down, but they never really then question you the the week after or, or whenever you are appearing on on the show the next time. And, and and hold you accountable to well, what did what what went wrong? Why didn't why didn't the market react uh, to you? Sorry, why didn't the market cooperate with your opinion? So I, I, I learned that whenever I see people go on TV and uh, you know espouse whatever mantra that it is that they are, are using and, and making a call, I, I just I've learned to switch off. I've learned to not take any serious notice of it, even if it's very very prominent people. And then you know just have faith in in your own in your own belief system and in, in, in your own approach to the market because ultimately the game that we are playing especially as traders but in particular as traders is that there is an astronomically high failure rate in our industry some 90 percent fail to make meaningful money or directly lose and it really does it, it does uh, require that you give some very serious thought to what it is that you are bringing into the market that is so different from the 90 percent because if you think that you're going to hit the market Market just because you discovered Fibonacci or Keltner channels or Bollinger Bands, you got another thing coming. And if you truly want to be an outstanding trader, you got to start working a lot more on yourself. And I'm not talking some, I'm not espousing some, some new age uh, hippie BS baloney here. I'm talking about that I actually understand how I react under certain circumstances. And me stepping away from the screen yesterday is just a reflection of me knowing well enough that if I'm tired or fussy or I don't know what's going on, I'm better off walking away than trying to make sense of it. Wow, that's really great. Listen, we want to thank you for being with us today, and we'll have you on again soon. Um, and may the force be with you, my friend, and live every day in an attitude of gratitude, because you've got a lot of things to be thankful for. <laughs> and, and I know you share them too, Tom. That's the great thing. I think that's wonderful what you do. Okay, folks, Tom Hugard of Trader, Tele, Trader Tom at Telegram, 
Com. Okay, let's move on here. We've got the, the S&P down quite a bit. The NASDAQ has dropped about 80 handles since we've been on the air. Gold's rallied about 3 or $4. And we've got the crude oil just made new lows again, below the 52 level of 51.62. So we're going to have some uh, pretty exciting things happening over here in the market here because we are we're breaking some uh, major support here uh, in the – well, there's major support down there at 5,100, of course. But it's going to be interesting to see if it can – uh, hold up at these levels. It's going to be uh, uh, quite interesting, as a matter of fact. Uh, we have uh, also, we've got a situation going here in the euro. It's continuing to accelerate up. That means the dollar is uh, coming down. The pound is doing the same thing. So we need to watch those. Uh, a lot of activity and volatility, which we're going to see more and more as uh, as we go through the area. Remember last night, folks, with that Amazon thing, we made perfect ABCD patterns in the E-mini up there at uh, 30 295 and then the s p excuse me in the and the the um timeout larry in the nasdaq up there at that 90 um 92 uh, 50 level it's dropped 100 handles uh since that spot so it's uh, quite interesting to see how the market's uh, reacting to these things. So we'll watch it. Bonds are getting close to breaking out above yesterday's high. We're trading at 163.10. Uh, if we get above that, folks, it's going to be in a run, and it's probably going to go a lot higher up to that 90, uh, to, to that one, uh, 165 level, if we can get above 164. So it's a very interesting phenomenon that we have going uh, there. So those are quite important as we look at these markets this morning very early. Okay, uh, I wanted to... To, to, to really highlight that dollar index, folks, because that, that's a really important thing, because that means this euro is really starting to accelerate. The British pound is starting to accelerate, and you're also seeing the same thing in the end. So these currencies are telling you that money is moving. And whether it's due to fear or whatever it happens to be, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. But, you know, we're looking at something that could be, you know, quite exciting if it uh, does turn from here. So it's uh, not going to be easy. And the first part of the morning, of course, is when the amateur hour is out here and people are out here doing their usual thing with, uh, you know, throwing orders around, not knowing what the heck they're doing. So make sure you plan what you're doing. You just heard what Tom does. If he doesn't understand where he is, he stands aside. And uh, that's a hard thing to do for some people including myself. Raise your hand, Larry. But uh, I like to look at things in a little bit different basis. Pay attention, folks, because on the S&P here, from that range we had yesterday to the high that we had last night, we are now setting exactly at the 61% retracement at 32.63. We just made that low. And uh, if that breaks below that, you're going to be looking at some serious, uh, serious movement uh, to the downside would be my guess. So lots of things happening, as they say here in River City. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on to the next one that I wanted to cover that I think will be a little bit interesting. And that is the uh, chart of Bitcoin. Get this up here and put the old bit in your mouth because it's this thing is starting to move, folks. Um, yeah, uh, let, let's let me just uh, cattle and hogs. Yeah, I will, Ruby, just a second here. Yeah, let's get into cattle. Uh, you know, I've got to do that. I've got to update the hogs because they've been just been absolutely massacred. So just give me a second, Ruby, and I'll I'll get this up here and to get these little hogs up here and the cattle. Where are those hogs at? There. Where are you, hogs? Get out of here. Oh, that's copper. Duck on it. Just a minute here. There we come. Here are the cattle. Oh, boy, look at these cattle. This has been a really nice one here. Uh, yeah, we came down really good on those cattle. Let's take a look here. All right, here we get up here. Where are we at? Uh, Okay, one second here. There we go. And here's the cattle. They've broken about eight cents. Look at the beautiful double top, butterfly top up there. You can see uh, right there at 128 now or 120. You know, Mr. Z and uh, was telling us about this. Very, very important. And, of course, if we take the next one that we want to look at, of course, will be the um, – let's get this up here. Let's take a look at it, which would be the – Piggies, where are those little piggies at? Here we are. Here's April Hall. This is the one that got smashed because, uh, oh, they're get, they're continuing to be smashed. <laughs> Let's get up here and take a look at this here. You'll see that uh, we have a um, wow. This thing has got you know, and we're getting close, Ruby. Uh, we got about another four or five cents to go down here, and I think we'll have a chance. Let's get this up here so you can take a look at it here. 
that's down about another uh, two cents, Ruby, right from here. I, are we limit down again? Let me see. Uh, yeah, I think we're, lim we're limit down again. So we've had one limit, two limits, one more limit tomorrow, Monday. Watch him at the 1618 level at 63. Uh, 90 or something like that. That you know, <laughs> I, I, it's going to be hard when you're trading limit positions, like limit down positions. So be extremely careful there, folks, because it can be really, uh, really very, very uh, tough on you. So watch it very closely, very, very closely. Uh, that's really what we're keeping an eye on here. I hope that helps, Ruby. I haven't traded hogs uh, for quite a while. Uh, you know, once we broke that support at the 70, I, and I wasn't even in them then. I spent all of my, that was April. Those are the April hogs. That's the that's the one that's the big thing going. So that's uh, what we're keeping a close eye on. But, you know, the, the volatility that we're seeing in these FANG stocks, folks, is just unbelievable. You know, you got $100 moves. You know, you had a $160 move in Amazon or something today. You know, and look at, look at, look what happened to Tesla. It's not a FANG stock, but look what it's, look what it's doing. It's moving $100 at a time. Ah, uh -huh, shades of 2000.com. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we broke below the 61% retracement now of 
uh, 3265. Uh, That's a very bad sign. We've uh, uh, looking at the NASDAQ, we have uh, shattered that one also. Let's move over to make sure. Oh, no, the NASDAQ is still hanging in there. Let's see what that one comes in at. And then we'll see. This is, a, you know, this is going to, oh, it's right there right now at uh, 9105. Whether that means very much or not, you know, I don't know. But uh, looks like the, it has a bearish bias to all these things. And we'll see if they continue, you know, moving uh, in that direction. We'll have to do one thing at a time as we walk, walk through these things here uh, this morning. All right, the bonds have just matched the highs of yesterday. We took them out by one tick. And whether that means very much or not, I'm not sure, but there's a really strong resistance up there at that Fibonacci level at 160, 160, uh, 163.10. So sort of pay uh, a little bit of attention to that because it would be uh, it'd be very important to, uh, to know that. That's the way it looks like to me. Anyway, we'll keep a close eye on it. Also, uh, I want to mention that we're going to be doing a special thing this weekend on, on our 24-7 newsletter. I'm going to be looking at these grains because someday in the future, they're going to have to start eating over in China again, and they're going to be backed up with orders, and that's when it's going to be uh, very, very interesting, you know, to uh, pay attention to. So let's keep, uh, keep, we're going to be watching that real closely over the uh, next two uh, next two days anyway to keep a close eye on that one for sure. That's something that we want to watch very, very closely, folks, because if we don't get to that one area, then we'll have to uh, We'll have to see what's going to happen with these things. So we'll do one thing at a time as we move on to these levels, and then we will know where we are. That's about it. Nothing else you can do. So let's move over here and take one other little thing that I wanted to do here, and uh, then we'll be ready to go. Um, I think I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, doing, I'm putting orders in, folks, as we're talking, so you'll have to, uh, you'll have to bear with me here a little bit because I, I do sort of watch things uh, closely as I'm watching, and it's hard doing it for me because it's the opening price time, and uh, that's when all the action's happening, so I've got to get my train of thought. It's over. Thank you very much. We'll see you folks on Monday. May God bless.